Ask anyone why cars with automatic transmissions accelerate more quickly than manuals these days, and they'll probably tell you it's because there's no interruption in power during shifts. Mm -mm -mm. That was already the case when automatics were slower than the manuals. No, no, something else changed. At the dawn of the automatic, the transmission had no way of cutting engine power during shifts. So if the engineers wanted it to be smooth, like a hydromatic, they tuned the tranny to simply slur from one gear to the next. If they wanted performance, like an old Mercedes automatic, it would just slam shift every gear. 50 years later, computer controls gave transmissions the ability to momentarily reduce engine output, which meant that they could shift both quickly and smoothly. Those controls also instructed the torque converter to lock up most of the time. This took the slush out of the box, eliminating much of the internal power loss. As a result, automatics started to get closer to their manual transmission counterparts in acceleration. The inefficiencies in their complex design were partially mitigated by their ability to shift quickly. Where the automatic really lost ground, especially in less powerful cars, was off the line because it couldn't perform a clutch dump. And then came the dual clutch automatic. DCTs can perform spectacularly abusive redline clutch dumps for launches just as quick as a manual. And since their larger clutches have more thermal capacity than the small bands and clutches in traditional automatics, they can often shift with no interruption in power. And suddenly, automatics were pulling slightly ahead. Slightly. And yet now we see automatics that are way faster than the manuals. Take for example the Porsche 911 Carrera S which gets to 60 in four seconds flat with the manual, 3.2 with the automatic. That is a massive difference, and the one shift necessary on the way to 60 doesn't come close to explaining it. But the math does. See, only about a third of that 0.8 second difference comes from the shift. The remainder? It's because Porsche geared the manual to lose. The PDK's first gear is 30% shorter than the manual's. Its second? is 43% shorter. In other words, torque at the rear wheels is 30% less in first gear and 43% less in second in the manual versus the PDK. <laughs> and this practice isn't just limited to Porsche. Ford does the same thing with the Mustang GT 5.0. First gear on the automatic is 45% shorter than the stick. Second is 42% shorter. A 40-something percent boost in torque is more than you'd get by twin turbocharging that 5.0. So is it any wonder that the slush box beats the manual by a half a second to 60? No. Which begs the question, why would car companies do this? As always, it comes down to the MPG number on the window sticker. Look, with full control over the entire powertrain, an automatic car can detect when it's following the exact conditions of the EPA's fuel economy test. And then it can optimize by short shifting, refusing to downshift, freewheeling, whatever it takes. The cheating options are far fewer with a manual. So car companies have no choice but to use longer gear ratios to reduce fuel consumption. Those ultimately make the car slower. This is, by the way, the same explanation for why the new Porsche 911 GT3 initially didn't pass drive-by sound level checks with the manual, but did with an automatic when both cars use exactly the same engine and exhaust. The automatic could just refuse to downshift during the test, but the manual? It had to be at wide open throttle in third gear. And by the way, the GT3 would have a much, much shorter third gear if it wasn't for that stupid test. And the ratio for third determines first and second. And so now you know why Porsches are geared so annoyingly long. When it comes to manuals, you can be fast and loud but not if you have short gears. And that's why the Mazda Miata is so quiet. <laughs> Mazda gears the Miata's manual for the experience, not for zero to 60 numbers or for EPA tests. And for the far less efficient transmission, it uses longer gear ratios so that it gets decent MPG in the real world. And since Mazda doesn't have time or money to devise cheating tactics for EPA tests, the two cars get roughly the same MPG rating. But the manual is 0.7 glorious seconds quicker to 60 miles an hour, which is exactly as it should be. Because if you buy a sports car with an automatic, you deserve to suffer. At least a little bit. Come on.
Let's play pretend for a second. Let's pretend you didn't see me just picking my nose and I'll pretend you don't know the way YouTube works. If you don't click like and subscribe, well then YouTube doesn't know you like what you just saw and isn't gonna show you more of it, which means I'm not gonna have a job. I won't be able to afford to pick my nose.